Hi all and welcome to this video where we're going to look at a shortcut to solving quadratic equations. So I'm going to use another shortcut and um, so if you haven't already seen it maybe go and look at the shortcut we have for factorizing quadratic expressions so specifically quadratic trinomials because I'm going to use those in the examples today. So what we use up to now has been called the vertical balancing method. However, as these questions have got more difficult, these have a, like this kind of vertical balancing fills up the page a lot quicker. So we want to see, is there an easier way where we can do this? So the logic is going to stay the same, but we're just going to cut out some of the lines if we can. So I'm going to do an example. So this example asks us to solve x squared plus 9x plus 20 equals 0. And these questions can be quite long, especially if you're using guide number to uh, factorize and then using vertical balancing to solve. So I'm going to use our shortcut. So we still take what is a guide number plus 20 and we want to get the factors that give us plus 9. So that for us is going to be plus 5 multiplied by plus 4. And we, in the shortcut, don't have to do that changing and all that stuff. We go and put an x in both brackets, a plus 5 in one bracket, and a plus 4 in the other bracket. And that's it. Super simple. And then we have equals 0, so we have another step. We're going to use the zero product property, which tells us that either x plus 5 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. And this is the point where we'd start doing the vertical balancing. Now, the balancing part is still very, very important. However, we want to kind of just make it a little bit uh, quicker or maybe not to take up as many lines as we have been doing. So usually we'd say, well, if x plus 5 equals 0, we take away a 5 from both sides. We're going to say that, and we're just not going to show that. So if I take away a 5 from both sides, I get x equals, and on this side, I get minus 5, which is my answer. Same for x plus 4 equals 0. To get rid of that 4, I take away a 4 from both sides. So that is x equals minus 4. And what this effectively looks like, what balancing actually looks like when we take off that vertical piece, is that when something moves across the equals, we end up doing the opposite to it. So when it was a plus 5, it becomes a minus 5. If it's a plus 4, it becomes a minus 4. Let's look at how that short can, can help us when we're doing questions like this. So this is a quadratic trinomial, but it's not in the format we want. So we want everything in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So here we were using vertical balancing and taking a 12 off both sides. But using this idea of a shortcut, I can either think about taking a 12 from both sides or think of it as moving across the equals. If we talk about it as taking away a 12 from both sides, we get 4x minus 12 equals 0. If we think about bringing it across the equals and doing the opposite, there it's a plus 12. When we bring it across, it is a minus 12. Either way, we have a much simpler way to do this than our vertical balancing. Now we're going to use our guide number, which is minus 12. Remember that the minus here means different signs, and we want it to add to minus 4. So we're going to have all of our factors are 12, so it could be minus 12 by 1, or 12 by minus 1, or minus 6 by 2, or 6 by minus 2. And actually, this is our correct factor pair here, because 6 minus 2 give me a positive 4. I'm not going to do full guide number here. I'm using that shortcut. So we get x, and we get plus 6, x minus 2 equals 0. So now, using that zero product principle, we're going to have these two answers. And using the logic of either taking a 6 from both sides or moving that plus 6 across, we get x equals minus 6. And here, the same, we get x equals, and in this case, adding 2 to both sides, so x equals 2.
So let's take a look at example 3, which is 5x squared minus 13x equals 6. There's a lot going on in this question. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So that 6 is on the wrong side, so we're going to take away a 6 from both sides, which gives us 5x squared minus 13x minus 6 equals 0. Now, we can't use the shortcut for factorization in this question because there is a 5 in front of the x squared. That shortcut only works when that's a 1, where the leading coefficient is 1. So we're going to do the full guide number method here. So we have guide number of minus 30, and we want to get the factors that add to minus 13. So when we work that through, it will be minus 15 multiplied by a plus 2. So we're going to replace the minus 13x with the minus 15x plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. Just double check, is minus 15x plus 2x the same as minus 13x? And yes, it is. We're going to break it into then our two groups. 5x is common in the first group, leaving us with x minus 3 in the bracket plus that sign always follows 2 is common leaving us with x minus 3 that all equals 0 the x minus 3 is common so that's pulled out to the front times 5x plus 2 and that all equals 0 now by the zero product property we know that x minus 3 equals 0 or 5x plus 2 equals 0 now, the x minus 3 is nice and straightforward. We will add a 3 to both sides, which will end up giving us x equals 3. The 5x plus 2 is not as straightforward, but we can still use some of the shortcut that we've learned. I want to get rid of that plus 2, so I'm going to take away a 2 from both sides. That gives me 5x equals minus 2. Now, here, I need to get x on its own. So I'm going to do what we've always done and divide both sides by 5. And that gives us x equals minus 2 over 5. That in itself is the shortcut because if we want to bring something over the equals, we do the opposite. So if we were to move that 5 across the equals, it is currently multiplying, so we would end up dividing it. So I wouldn't suggest changing that step at all. It makes sure you get it right. I find students who don't put in the dividing on both sides often get confused what goes on the top, what gets on, goes on the bottom. So keep that shortcut for just the adding and subtracting part for now and keep working the way you're working. If you're happy, if you want to start applying that shortcut, that's perfect. But if it's not working for you, if you're not getting the right answers, you need to go back to using the long method.